Hello everyone, I hope you're doing good. Today, in this video, I want to talk to all of those people who want to study in Canada. Now, there might be people who want to get their PR and then study. And there might be people who want to get uh, to Canada on a study permit first and then eventually make their journey to get their permanent residency. So in this video, we'll talk about the pros, the cons and the challenges that you'll face in either of these pathways. Now, because of the travel restrictions, many students could not travel to Canada. So we'll also talk about the measures that the Canadian government has taken in order to help those people so that they can eventually get their work permit and their permanent residency as well. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Well, all right, let's start with those people who either already have the permanent residency or might be getting in sometime down the line and thinking of studying after landing in Canada. Okay, if you belong to the second category of people who actually want to come to Canada on a study permit and then eventually get the PR, then I'll provide a time here. You can actually go on to that part of the video so that you don't waste your time unnecessarily. Now guys, I know if you already have the COPR and that has expired, you got it after March 18, 2020, there are many questions going round and round. Uh, we won't be talking about those. We know there are a lot of concerns about that. You can't still travel to Canada because without the authorization letter. Uh, we won't talk about that because that's a discussion for a separate video. We will talk about the study part after getting the PR. Okay, now there are many benefits of studying in Canada after getting the PR. We'll discuss the top three benefits. Number one, you'll have to pay a lot less fee than what an international student will actually pay. You might have heard about it, but yes, I can confirm it that in most of the colleges and the Canadian universities, you'll find that international students are actually paying twice or sometimes thrice the amount that a Canadian permanent resident or a citizen is actually paying. And when we talk about that, we are obviously talking about thousands of dollars. So it will definitely make a lot of difference. Okay, the second point is about the co-op work permit. What is a co-op work permit? So you might have heard about the internship or the co-op placement during the studies. So some study programs actually include work experience as a part of their curriculum as well. And you can't just do that on a study permit. You need to have a co-op or intern work permit. So if you're an international student, you obviously have to apply that co-op work permit. It obviously has its own hassles. You'll have to do the payment, which is not much, but still uh, you'll have to you know, fill up all those forms, then wait, you know, follow up all of those things. If you have the PR, then you have the big benefit that you don't have to apply for that co-op work permit. And because you have the right to work, study and live in Canada, you can actually uh, work while you're studying. That's not a problem. And talking about working while you're studying, you can actually work more than 20 hours, you know, 40 hours, 45 hours, whatever you want. Because being an international student, you have that restriction that with your studies, you can only work for 20 hours a week. That's the maximum. But if you have the permanent residency, you can work for 40 hours, 30 hours, you know, if you can manage the work with your studies. And talking about work, this brings me to my third point, which is about the postgraduate work permit. So, of course, if you have the PR, you have the right to work in Canada. So, of course, you don't need to get the postgraduate work permit, which is really great, right? Obviously, the students want that work permit badly because only after that they can work in Canada. So, if you have the PR, you don't have to apply for the PGWP, which is postgraduate work permit. And you can actually work in Canada without any problems. But if you're an international student, then you'll have to apply for that PGWP and depending on your length of the course, you'll get the postgraduate work permit accordingly. Okay, now talking about all of those international students who actually want to come to Canada on a study permit, pursue their higher education here and then eventually make their way to get the permanent residency as well. Of course, this is a way which is very popular because getting the Canadian permanent residency is getting increasingly difficult every passing year. I also suggested this in one of my previous videos that if you want to immigrate, 
and you're finding difficulty in getting the PR, this is one way which you can consider. Okay, now when we talk of international students, because of COVID in the last one year, exactly since March 2020, in-person classes haven't been conducted in most of the Canadian colleges and universities. So the Canadian government actually said that if you actually completed 100% of your studies online, even then you would be getting the postgraduate work permit. So earlier it was said that you should be able to complete 50% of your studies online and then rest of it should be in person. But now because since last one year we have seen that you know almost no in-person classes have been conducted. So the rule has been changed and now even if you've completed 100% of your studies online you'll get the PGWP which is the postgraduate work permit. At least you'll be eligible for that PGWP. And talking of the online studies, I've seen many comments and Facebook posts, people getting confused if they're doing online studies, will that be uh, getting them the necessary points for the Canadian education in the express entry system? So yes, even if you have, uh, you're doing your studies online, that would count as the Canadian education and you would get points for uh, the express entry system for your Canadian education as well. Now earlier this year, understanding that getting a job during the lockdown and restrictions is also not very easy. So they have actually given this one-time opportunity to uh, many students whose work permit was actually expiring that their work permit would also be extended. But this is again a one-time opportunity. It is not a rule for every time. Okay, now talking about the pathway to get the permanent residency after getting the study permit. Of course, once you complete your studies, you get more points for your Canadian education. So you can directly apply in the express entry system without even having the Canadian work experience. So if you have an international work experience, you can include that and you'll be eligible. Now moving on, once you get the postgraduate work permit and you work in Canada for one year or more, you get eligible for Canadian experience class. And you might have heard recently Canada is actually opting more for those people who are in Canada, who have Canadian work experience, who belong to Canadian experience class. Now, this is a great way, but not very easy, I would say, because getting a job in NOC 0, A or B is not very easy immediately after your studies. I've seen many students actually working for different odd jobs and trying to get into a job which could actually get them the necessary Canadian work experience so that they can actually be eligible for CEC category. Okay, now talking about the last way, which is the PNP programs. So many of these provinces actually have their own PNP programs. And in those PNP programs, they do have separate streams for international uh, students, the graduates who actually have graduated from their province. So that is one catch there. If you've graduated from, let's say, Ontario, you would be eligible to apply for uh, one of the Ontario's international graduate streams. So that is another way. Again, I would make a separate video on this. It's a very huge topic, cannot be discussed in just one video. But yes, this video was basically to give you an idea, a comparison between uh, doing your studies before getting the permanent residency and uh, after the permanent residency. Hope if you like the content, then you would click the thumbs up button, which is the like button. And if you have any feedbacks, any queries, please put it down in the comment section below. I'll try my level best to answer it. And also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please click the subscribe button before moving on to the next video. Thanks again.